Hey there, my name is Julian, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about something that concerns, well, every single Webflow developer and anyone who works any job for that matter, and that is money, money, money. How do you make more of it as a Webflow developer in 2025? Now, I've heard a whole bunch of different things. Some of it is great advice, some of it not so much. So in this video, I wanna go over three things that I think are the most important for you to focus on as a Webflow developer if you wanna make more money this year than you did last year. So let's get right into it. Now, first things first, I really quickly wanna tell you about myself. I started my career as a web designer and a web developer working in various platforms. Now, after that, I got really hooked on Webflow and I ended up co-founding a Webflow specific agency, which I led for a couple of years. And now I work for Memberstack. If you don't know what Memberstack is, it allows you to add gated content, social auth, and a whole bunch more that allows you to turn your Webflow site into a business. There's a link in the description below. So I have worked with a whole bunch of different Webflow developers, and I've seen Webflow developers who whose pay essentially stagnates for years and years and years because they don't do these things. And I've seen other Webflow developers who in the matter of only a few years, let's say three years from the time they built their first website, are making hourly pays upwards of 50 to 100 US dollars an hour. And all of them do these things. So please watch this video through to the end, do what they do, and you will have a pay like what they have. Now, the first thing that I wanna talk about is super important, and that is niching. So you probably heard that term quite a few times and it's nothing new to you. Perhaps it even seems a little bit cliche. I am here to tell you that not only is it not cliche, but it is one of, if not the most important thing that you can do to make more money as a Webflow developer. Now, why is that? You, if you're a Webflow developer and that is what you do, let's say on your LinkedIn, on your Upwork, you say, I am a Webflow developer. Well, when you're applying for jobs, you are just one of many, perhaps over a hundred applicants that that person got and all of them just say Webflow developer. Webflow developer is not very specific. And by calling yourself a Webflow developer, you are putting yourself in a pool of a lot of different people. Now you are a Webflow developer. So what are you going to do about that? Enter niching. The people who I have seen who make a lot of money as Webflow developers, they don't just call themselves Webflow developers. They find something in the Webflow process that they either like or just happen to be naturally good at, and they double down on that thing. So just to give you a couple of examples of things that I've seen people doing and who have upped their pay as a Webflow developer, focusing on SEO in Webflow, focusing on building animations, let's say with GSAP, focusing on accessibility and compliance, focusing on web apps. These are just a few of the things that I have seen people do to differentiate themselves and no longer be just a Webflow developer, but be someone specific. And here's the thing, imagine you're a client right now and you are trying to build a website. Chances are you have some sort of goal in mind. Perhaps that goal is to drive organic traffic. Now, if that's the case and you have a hundred different applicants, and 99 of them say Webflow developer, Webflow developer, Webflow developer. And then you find one that says Webflow SEO expert. That person right there to you as the client is immediately going to have a massive upper hand because you focus in the thing that deep down is what that client actually wants. So perhaps your hourly rate is two, three, four, even five times more than the other applicants. But because you have that special thing that matters so much to the client, you are not only going to get the job, but you're going to make a lot more money on it as well. So niching cannot be understated. It is one of the most important things that you can do to stand out from the crowd and be your own person rather than just another Webflow developer. Okay, so now let's get into method number two. And method number two is building your brand. So this is similar to niching in the sense that the end goal of it is to set you out from the crowd of all of these other Webflow developers. So what do I actually mean by building your brand? Now, you probably use a platform such as Upwork to find jobs where you essentially see jobs from clients, you apply for them, and the client may or may not pick you. Platforms like that are phenomenal because they allow people who have no prior connections to find paying clients quickly. 
That being said, platforms like that have their own inherent downside, and that is often referred to as a race to the bottom. The reason for that is this. Again, imagine you're posting a job and you get a hundred applicants that all just say Webflow developer, Webflow developer, Webflow developer, and they all do pretty good work. Which one are you gonna pick? More than likely the cheapest one. And the people who use Upwork, perhaps even yourself, have noticed that and have dropped your prices down. Perhaps you would normally charge 30 or $40 an hour, but on Upwork, you're only charging 15 or 20 because if you have your price set to 30 or 40, you are gonna get eclipsed by all of the cheaper applicants who may live in a place where they can actually live off of that amount of money. You may not be able to, so how do you charge those 30, 40, 50, so on, dollar an hour rates? That is all about building your brand. Like I said, when you are just another Webflow developer on Upwork, you don't have many opportunities to set yourself apart. But by building your brand, what I mean is by making a name for yourself. And perhaps this goes along with niching. Make it known that you are you and you do what you do better than anyone else, whether that is just Webflow development and you're not niching or whether it's Webflow SEO. Share your expertise with the world. Make videos just like I'm doing right now to educate people on what they can do to improve their, for example, SEO within Webflow. If you do that, and if people constantly see you and get valuable insights for free from you, then as soon as they need somebody who does what you are gonna do, they're gonna look straight to you. They're not gonna go post a job on Upwork. They're not gonna go look for other people. And because you're you and you hold this special place in their mind as the person who, let's say, taught them how to add meta tags to their Webflow site, they are gonna pay you a lot more than they would pay anyone else because they have trust in you. And they know that when they pay you, you are actually going to get the job done. Right, and now we've come down to method three, which you may think is a little bit obvious, but this one is also huge, cannot be understated, and perhaps is the most straightforward way that you can make more as a Webflow developer. And that is, my friends, learning more skills. Well, what do I mean by that? Now, I'm not telling you to go and learn how to paint a house. I'm telling you to do things that are directly related to your process. What do I mean by process? Well, what do clients come to you for? Generally, as a Webflow developer, they're coming to you to build out their website. So what do you charge for that? Perhaps $500, perhaps a thousand, perhaps a hundred thousand. I don't quite know, but regardless, this still applies. Web development is only one part of the finished product. When a client comes to you needing a website, they typically don't just need development. They don't have an in-house team of people ready to help them. Some do, but usually they don't. That person, that client is going to need to get their website planned by someone who understands user experience to plan it, make a site map, make a plan, discuss it with the client. That costs money. Next, they're gonna need someone to design their website, perhaps in Webflow even, perhaps in Figma, which is probably more standard, but they need someone to design that. That is also not cheap. Then there's developing the website, which you handle, so we're good on that part. After that, what needs to happen? Perhaps the website needs to be optimized for search. Once that's done, the website needs to be marketed. Analytics need to be implemented. The client has a purpose for building this website, and that purpose is the same reason you're watching this video more than likely, and that is money. So if you figure out what your client's goal is, if you talk to them and say, now you came to me to develop your website, why are you even building this website? You are more than likely going to hear something such as, well, we want to increase our organic traffic or we want to increase our conversions or something like that. So if you know all of these skills that I just mentioned, if you understand user experience, you understand web design, you understand SEO, you understand advertising and you understand analytics, you are no longer going to be charging, let's say, $3,000 for a web development project. You are going to be charging $10,000 for a complete web and marketing project. And your client is going to be happy to pay you because they didn't have to go around and find a million different people. You can do all of it. People typically don't want to hire new people. If someone who they're already working with can do multiple jobs, they would rather even pay that person more to do the job just so they don't have to deal with working with a whole bunch of different people. So not only are you going to make more money, but your clients are going to be much happier. Now, to wrap up this entire video, I've shared with you three very important methods to make more as a Webflow developer. 
To recap, we've got niching and carving out your own space in Webflow development rather than just being a part of the crowd. The second one is building your brand. So setting yourself apart, making your own connections and working on your own terms instead of a platform like Upwork. And finally, learning more skills so that you can do the entire or at least majority of a website project rather than just being the Webflow guy. These three things, if you focus on this over the next year, come back to me and tell me how much more you're making now than you were making a year ago. I am sure if you focus on these things, your income is going to increase significantly. Now, unfortunately, it's not some sort of quick win, throw it in, double your income. Those things just don't exist. But I hope in this video, you gain the perspective to understand where you should focus your energy as a Webflow developer this year. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like and subscribe to Member Stack. I'll talk to you soon and have a great day.